everything down. Me just painting everything is me just being anal. The whole axle's been painted. All right, so let me go get the instructions. I kind of remember that one bracket needs to be inside, then the other side needs to come in. Let me go get the pictures. Alrighty, so these shaved bolts here, can you guys see that? Focus. All right, these are gonna be threaded onto the back of the axle tubing. So I guess these are thread, these are shaved for clearance issues. Because remember the other ones, they came in from the truck side facing in, now we're reversing it and we're going back out. So I am just gonna put some anti-seize here. And I guess judging by that these are being shaved, that we're gonna have some clearance issues. So that's why they're shaved like that. So this is gonna be a strenuous process. I brought my gear wrench out thinking that I could fit my gear engine on here but that is not the case so we're gonna bolt this all the way in and then from there these axles should I mean these bolts we could start sliding on our brackets the slide on the first big bracket and then line up our spacers if I'm understanding these directions correctly all right this is gonna take a while all right guys, so you know when you do something a second time it becomes easier and notice some tips and tricks. So here we are with the shaved bolt and I'm just using this on my iPhone real quick, but I'm using a 17 millimeter wrench on the shaved side, turn it, and then once you get a good spin out of it, you take your 19 and you're just gonna rotate, you're gonna alternate the wrenches as you go. Don't make me look like a Come on. There we go, see that? 19. Get your 17. All right, and you're gonna keep alternating between 19 and 17 till you get enough space. You know, you thread it in enough, and then you could switch to your ratchet and socket. Do we have enough space? No, but you guys get the idea. Just a little tip and trick, a 17 and 19 to do these shaved bolts. All right guys, pounded out all the studs once again. And now this is the one we're gonna have to retorque. Now, I did call the guy at TSM and be like, hey man, this is what happened. And he says, yes, you are supposed to torque these down to 80 foot pounds. Originally, these would come separate, but then shops couldn't figure out how to install them. So he, all he does is install them so you know how they go. It's up to you guys to take a 3 8 Allen head, set your torque wrench to 80 pounds, flip this over, put the drum, put the stud inside the holes, and we are going to torque it down to 80 foot pounds. Each one. See, this is the loose one. You see that? Ah, 80. Ah, come on. Three. All right, mechanical yoga. Four. Come on. Seven. 
生相撲ずしてるワン・ツー・スリー・フォーアイ・ヴァーディーレッツ・ジェス・メイク・シュア Because I'm not pounding out these studs again. All right, there we go. All right, now we're going to go back to reinstalling it, which we previously covered <laughs> already. Don't forget when you guys are done with your torque wrench, tech tip is to always undo it so the spring doesn't wear itself out. <laughs> All right. All right, so now we're setting up the drum installation. <clears throat> I'm just waiting to hear back from an email from the guy. I have a question. So as you guys know, look at the other videos. You gotta pop out the studs. So now we're gonna put the new studs, the studs, Go with the spacer that they have, this adapter. So this is a brass punch, doesn't have to be. Don't ask me why, but it is what it is. Give this a couple of good whacks. These gotta bottom out. Hit it like a man. I'm gonna flip this over. Now you're gonna hear a different sound once it bottoms out. And you know you're bottomed out when you hear that sound. I don't know if the camera could pick up. It's like a dead sound. See, look, in, not in. Hear that? Can you hear the difference? All right, so we're gonna do all these off camera and then we'll go back to the brackets. I almost forgot. I almost forgot. Here's a good little trick. Take this, take the drum, flip it, all right? And put them in there. Because I'm really sure you're guaranteed into a nice, solid, flat surface. And well, now we should be able to hear the difference. All right, bottom down. Hear that? Not bottom down. Hear that? Once it becomes a thump. You hear that? All right. You know you're in. Hello? Yep, perfect. All right guys, so we're looking at this thing basically dead on. So as you guys could see, this bracket it's basically going to be like a Pac-Man type deal. See the C? It's basically going to be facing towards the rear. Basically dead on, not on an angle, straight. And then from there, you're going to take your nuts and lock washers and install them so you can bolt down the bracket. Ignore these. These are your free air caliper. But see these right here, the short one, or the ones that we pass through? We're gonna get a nice lock washer and the nut. And then if I'm reading the instructions right, these have to get torqued down to 64 foot-pounds. Now I am gonna run these down with my gun um, on a low pressure setting. And then I will let the torque wrench do the, less, the rest of the work. I'm not gonna use this like a ratchet style. I am going to, because this is only, 
can hear my gun. But the difference, it's only 19 foot-pounds. I mean 64 foot-pounds. We are going to just have the gun to the right. Oh, that's painful. I'll just do a little tight there. This is painful. My compressor is on. You can hear my compressor kicking on now. Yeah, so we're just gonna go on a crisscross pattern. Just going it just sight snug enough. I can't wait all day for it's done. That's it. So now we tightened it. Hopefully just nice and snug. And then now 64 foot pounds in a crisscross pattern. Heard that? Click. Click. So you now you gotta do two clicks to make sure. And we'll go across. Click. One more time. And number three for good luck. while you check. Click. Click. One more time. One. Two. Three. Four. All right, so now our hub is in place. Next are gonna be these spacers. Okay. And they're just gonna go in two at a time. One, two. One, two. And that is so this bracket here can clear. the inside bracket that we just installed. Here we go, oops, I'm on my creeper. You see that? See how this bracket clears those bolts? That's exactly what we're looking for. All right guys, so we have the bracket bolted up. I got it nice and snug. Remember, you're using the longer bolts, lock washer, and bolt. 19 millimeter, I got it snug down. And then I'm gonna hit this again with the torque wrench for 64 
foot-pounds, just like the other one. Oh, where'd it go? Where are we? So obviously, let's see if we have to, nope, we can get away with it. Seeing if the back of the bolt moves. All right, yep, 64. One. Two. Nope. All right, that one's a little loose. So we'll get my 19 millimeter. Now I am putting, it says light oil. I'm putting anti-seize on here. Light oil is fine too. At your own recommendation. The reason why there's light oil is this thing called clamping force. And it is proven that if you use certain types of fluids while clamping things, not going in dry, the clamping force is tighter. <laughs> tight. So now all these should be tight. One. Two. Three. Four. Alright. That's it. I'm going to start to clean up so my tools aren't out. And I want to show you a few things inside and how I laid things out. So basically that's the rotor. Everything is labeled right and left. That is the other spacer for the other drum. This is where I kind of left off. I have to put a new wheel seal in there. So I'm going to start that for tomorrow. But inside here, we'll have everything laid out. So these are your brackets. These are your four bolt. These are the big long bolts that go through for the end that bolt basically the one bracket to the other bracket. These are the short ones that are cut. Now these here, these 16 nylon lock nuts and these 16 hardened washers, these black washers, these go on here. This is what the rotor is going to get seated on and we're going to bolt there. That will be for tomorrow. All right, so basically we have everything back in again. Uh-oh, I left one loose. Ah, man, right here. We'll see how hard it is to just run this thing down by hand. But now we are at 100 foot-pounds. We have to torque these down too. Torque is very important. Oh, come on. There has to be a better way. <laughs> so those are 15 16 I'm literally trying to have like a distance shot for you guys because I know you guys are going to have the same problem as me. Yeah. Or, hold on. How do we get There we go. One crisscross pattern. That has to be rotor on its side. Nope, that was a stupid idea. <laughs> nope. Come on. You sit on it. Weight results vary upon weight. Six. 
All right, let's try. One, two, three. Here we go. Switch the position. Right, we are done. Don't forget, when you're done using your torque wrench, undo it so it's not compromised. Whew. Wait, other way, dummy. Ah. All right, now you got to go correct the bracket, which we will not be doing on camera. This beautiful rotor. Ah. Well, let me tell you, even though we have to clean up all these leaves, where do you want to start? One, back to the brakes. <clears throat> this bracket is wrong. I need to flip this and put this on the inside. So I have to redo the work that I did yesterday. Two things I need to redo. The spacers, which we'll talk about that. I'm sorry, the hub adapter, we'll talk about that. Number three is, you know what? It's a little chilly out. Mandingo has not rained in a little bit. I figure while I get my tools out, clean up, let me fire up the truck. Let's get the oil going, all the fluids going, make sure everything is nice and lubricated instead of drying and running down. And it started screaming from the hood. Shut it down, pop it open, built this smoking. My alternator locked up. It just never ends. So that means we're going to be taking another negative and turning into a positive, we're going to be doing the 145 amp alternator upgrade because we can. So let me get this bracket flipped. Maybe I'll worry about that later. God damn it. Every time you give your vehicle an arm, it just wants to take everything else with you. It's like a never ending cycle. Alrighty guys, so we have to flip this bracket, which it is as you guys could see. Notice how the bracket is facing the inside towards the spring. Also make a notation, your bolts are going to be facing the head of the bolt here on the outside. The nut and the lock washer are going to be here on the inside facing the axle. So it's going to be opposite of the way we have it here. See nuts, axle in washer and nut out and then the opposite for this bracket now we could start mounting up the caliper oh it's gonna suck just imagine me picking up this heavy drum rotor oh everything bolted to it now we just gotta kind of sort of slide this all in but hold on i gotta uh, clean this up and lube it Okay, right, so we're going to put the hub on, which I already did. Make sure that your shaft is lubricated. I'm, I think I hit the, I forgot if I hit the record button or not. I think we lost the footage. I am not redoing this. So clean off everything on the shaft. Lubricate everything with oil. Slide this back on. Next is this specialty nut that nobody really ever talks about doing it the right way. And that we're going to go as far as preloading it. And the method to doing this is you're going to torque it to 50 foot-pounds, right? Then spin this a couple of times the opposite way. Then torque it down to 35 foot-pounds. And then from there, if you need, if the keyholes aren't lined up, then you back it off to a kilo keyhole and you are good to go. So I'm just setting up my torque wrench, which you guys should have when doing this. It's just safety, guys. Now we're going to get this thing with the tits on there. Make sure... No, don't do that. Don't use your torque wrench as a hammer. Oh, come on. 
heard that click? That's 50. Now let's spin it the other way. Okay, let's back this off. A little bit. Then we are going to go to 35 on the torque wrench. So. All right, that's it. This thing is properly seated and we are good to go. Now, what we need to do is, oh no, we have to do that keyway. Let's see if this keyway is lined up. Keyway is not lined up. We're getting work done on the house, guys, so I can't stick the camera behind me, sorry. Construction guys are in here. You see that, this key? Okay, we need to line up this keyway with one of these slots, so we're gonna back this off. Almost there. Let's oh, oh, tighten it. Okay, good. Where is our keyway that I literally just had in my hand? Okay. Clean this off real good. And then drop it on the floor. Let's clean this again. And we will stick it in there. Now, we take our ring. Clean this off. And same thing. Stick it in. And make sure this is seated in nice and tight so the keyway and everything else won't back out. Then after that we could start our axle and our caliper.